An ancient high-level route runs from Ochalater Farm in Glen Clooney, just south of Bremar, over the hills known as the Mounth, down through Glendall to the head of Glen Clover. It's very popular with walkers and it's known as Jock's Road. It's named after a certain John or Jock Winters who took sides in a landowning dispute several centuries ago between Lord Aberdeen and Lord Invercauld. Well, here we are at Loch Calata Lodge. That's taken us quite a wee bit of time to, to walk that bit. I won't say how long it took us, but anyway. Loch Calata Lodge is actually something of a, a bit of a complex. There's three buildings within this complex. There's the, the lodge itself, probably dates back to Victorian times, I would imagine. There's what used to be the stables for stabling the ponies. The ponies were used to bring deer carcasses down off the hill and another wooden structure, which to me, for all the world, looks like a, a deer carcass house. I'm not certain about that, but that's what it looks like to me. Right, we've left Loch Calater Lodge behind, and we're now walking along the shores of Loch Calater itself. Now, one of the interesting things, I remember I mentioned to you at the beginning that uh, there's been a few tragedies associated with Jocks Road and the general area of Jocks Road. And one such tragedy happened just about 40 years ago when a Canberra bomber crashed on a hill up in that direction there, Carn and Taggart's Moor. And the hillside is strewn with pieces of aircraft still there to this day. The Canberra bomber that crashed 40 years ago apparently contained four crew members and of course they were all killed. So that's one of the tragedies to occur eh, in relation to Jocks Road. The next part of the walk involves going along beside the shores of Loch Calater here, heading towards the hill that you can see lit up by the sun. That's Tolmont, and Tolmont is a Munro, a Munro being a mountain in Scotland over 3,000 feet, or 914.4 metres. We have, in fact, to walk up a steep Corrie back wall. It's called Corrie Breck, and although it's not marked in the map, apparently that is the name, Corrie Breck. There's nothing very difficult about it, it's all quite grassy, but it is fairly steep. So that's the next bit. This is the start of a fairly steep ascent up a grassy Corrie back wall. This is in fact Corrie Breck, which means the speckled Corrie. And this will take us up onto the plateau where I would imagine the wind will be a bit stronger. Now today with the sun shining, all looks very benign and pleasant. But on the 1st of January 1959, during a howling gale and a blizzard, five men of the Universal Hiking Club struggled up here. They managed to gain the plateau and were hit with the full force of the worst blizzard. 
to hit the, the UK in living memory. Unfortunately, all five men perished. Today, however, things are much different and we're now going to, obviously, and we're now going to make our way up Corrie Breck. Well, here we are at the highest bit uh, of Jocks Road. It's a point called Crow Craigie's and it's at 920 metres. Now, Crow Craigie's is just one of many significant summits on a great plateau which is known as the Mounth. Well, from the summit of Crow Craigie's, it's downhill all the way. A bit like this video, really. This is a plaque, a commemoration plaque put up by the Universal Hiking Club of Glasgow to commemorate the five men who perished in a blizzard on Jocks Road on the 1st of January 1959. The men were Frank Daly, Robert McFall, Joseph Devlin, Harry Duffin and James Boyle. Now, two of the men actually got as far as this point before they finally succumbed to the blizzard. They were within a couple of hundred yards of Jock's hut, but I don't think it would have made much difference to their survival. One of the men, Robert McFall, was a college lecturer at Coatbridge College. He worked in the engineering department. Now, a man who played a leading part in the search for the five men was a certain Davy Glenn. And Davy Glenn decided to build a refuge to replace Jock's hut and it became known as Davies Buruch. And Davies Buruch is just a few yards from this plaque, so let's have a look at that now. Okay, here we are at Davies Buruch. I'm just going to get inside and have a wee bit of a nosy around, and also to check it out for acoustics. The final section of the route leads us down through beautiful Glendall, hemmed in on all sides by steep rocky crags. Although not particularly long as wilderness walks go, Jock's Road should not be treated lightly. Competency in map work and compass reading are vital, especially if the weather turns nasty. Remember, the summit section is almost trackless. We have been lucky with the weather today, but it has to be kept in mind that this route has claimed many lives.